Let's get right to our program. To my immediate left, co-owner, president, and CEO of the Arizona Coyotes, Mr. Anthony LeBlanc. <laughs> Seated to his left, somebody that has been very busy over the last little while, a draft and signing some key free agents, the executive vice president and general manager of the Coyotes, Don Maloney. And without a doubt, the best coach in the National Hockey League, Mr. Dave Tippett. All right, this is all about you Coyotes fans answering questions. But before we get there, I want to turn it over to Anthony to make some opening remarks. And then we'll get to your questions and find out what's on your mind. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, it means so much to, to all of us, obviously up here on the stage, but everybody in the organization. It's, uh, it's been an interesting few weeks for all of us, uh, but we are very happy that the focus now is where it should be, which is on the ice. Uh, for those of you that were here earlier today, first off, thank you for coming. It's great to see a standing room only crowd, to see all of our prospects. Uh, and it was also equally fun to watch Coach Tippett do what he does best, which is get the best out of players. Um, so if you didn't come today and you have time tomorrow or Thursday, I believe tomorrow we're on the ice at 1.50, Thursday we're on the ice at 2.15. Um, it's, uh, this is the reason we're all here. Uh, it has nothing, and I'm sure I'll, I, I, I'll, I'll go with the over-under that it's the second question that I get asked about a certain municipality to the west of us. Uh, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about hockey, but if, I'll, I'll, I'll let Dave answer any questions about Glendale and I'll answer questions about the power play. <laughs> Sir, you lead us off tonight. What's on your mind? I've been a Coyote season's ticket holder since the start, when they were at America West Arena, then here in Glendale. I drive 65 miles each way from Gold Canyon for these games. I'm a, thank you. I'm also, don't hold that against me, a 70-year-old French-Canadian who grew up with Hockey Night in Canada, La Soirée du Hockey, with the original six teams in the 50s and 60s. Last year, I did not renew my season tickets because I did not think the team was heading in the right direction. My hockey knowledge actually was insulted when the team's answer to off offense woes at the end of the previous year was to add Martin Herat to the roster who had one goal in the previous 59 games. Where were you going with that? This year, with the prospect of young talent and high draft picks, I renewed my premium season tickets you tell us that fan support is your most pressing agenda, yet you are handed a golden opportunity to cease and desist from your Glendale location so that you could choose your own destiny and in the long run come east to a destination location that would be more desirable for your fan base, such as myself. You choose to spend money finding a battle that in the long run will erode your already thin fan base and eventually will make you lose loyal fans such as myself. So what if you lose 1,500 non-viewable seats a game at first, if you return to Suns Arena in downtown Phoenix, for instance, you're losing many more thousands of seats by staying in Glendale. My suggestion to you, don't fight this golden opportunity move away, save some money, and get the offensive talent that we sorely need. Build it, and they will come. Because if you don't, I, for one, will cancel my two previous season tickets. Thank you. Well, um, first off, as one French-Canadian to another, uh, thank you for your French-Canadian passion. Uh, I, I understand it. I, I also thank you for renewing your season tickets. Uh, we had a frustrating couple of years, and these guys can definitely tell you their frustrations. Um, I also, uh, it would be fair to say, I echo your frustration 
with the situation with our friends in the city of Glendale. Uh, but at the end of the day, we have to do the right thing in regards to our long-term future. We have to do the right thing in regards to the hockey operations. Um, I, I've, I've had many people suggest, you know, hey, the right thing to do is to, to move back downtown. Unfortunately, it's not as easy as that. Uh, yeah, but you, you did highlight something. There is no question that we do have the opportunity right now, if we wanted to, to move the franchise. And I think it's a testament to, and maybe it's finally the opportunity for me to say, I told you so, that we have no intention of moving this franchise out of state. But, well, thank you for that. But the, um, you know, running a hockey team is, it's, it's a very complex business. Uh, the, the facilities that you require, it's very complex, it's it, very logistic heavy, and uh, obviously U.S. Airway, or I think they're now Talking Stick uh, Resort Arena, uh, has, a, uh, has an anchor tenant that, uh, that has, you know, a number of dates that are already locked up. At the end of the day, we, we feel the right thing to do is, is to fight for, uh, fight for our rights, so to speak. But I will tell you that we feel that things have calmed down, which is a good thing. I think emotions on both sides has calmed down, which is a good thing. Um, I don't think anybody wins this. I, I, I don't think, even if, if we were to win or the city is to win in a, in a protracted lawsuit, nobody wins. Uh, we've already lost. Uh, we, we've lost, um, you know, Don struggling this past week. He did a great job, by the way, but he, he certainly struggled in regards to signing free agents. And, you know, he was very candid today about uh, the contract with, um, uh, with Mikhail Bodker. Uh, we've seen sponsors that are questioning. There's no question that we're losing and the city's losing, so I'm very hopeful that common sense will prevail. Um, and we'll, we'll do the right things. But I, I appreciate your, your, your candor and your feedback, uh, but we feel strongly that our home is Gila River Arena. Sir, we'll, uh, we'll switch it over here. Hi, I'm uh, Will, and uh, this mic's about as tall as I am. Uh, but I, I want to bring it back to hockey. I got a hockey question for you. And um, pretty much, Don Maloney said that there's about five, six spots open for prospects. And pretty much I'm wondering which ones do you think are going to actually are in the lead kind of now to make the roster. As far as Domi, he seems to pretty much be a shoe in but you got Declare, you got Dvorak, you got Perlini. Uh, who do you think uh, is likely to make it? I know you probably can't say right now, but uh, pretty much right now, if you were to make the roster today, who would it be? Well, uh, thank you. The good thing is we have options, which is nice to see. And I, I think you know, what happened uh, at free agency and able to, you know, kind of solidify our center ice position. If you think of last year, and it, it was a disaster last year. We can't sugarcoat it. It was a disaster. We, uh, there was a reason we did what we did was to, uh, to trade off some people and, uh, and uh, drop to the bottom, but we certainly don't like it. I don't expect to stay there. So uh, fortunately, we got some picks and some assets. And you really uh, hit the names uh, hit the nail on the head on the regard to the names it's really going to be up to performance in training camp we we are purposely leaving three to four forward positions a defenseman or two position available whether it's a Domi or Duclair or Samuelson or Perlini or Dvorak or or a Strom or this Merkley uh, there's there's all kinds of opportunities but their their performance is going to dictate who makes the team we really very hard for Tip and I to stay, stand up here. We certainly, you look at Max Domi, what he's done uh, in his career, his junior career. Uh, you know, to me, he's probably the most uh, most likely candidate, but he has to do it too. He, maybe he needs some time in the minors. Uh, Anthony Duclair played three months in, in New York before he went to the World Junior. So he, again, he's he's tasted the NHL game. They may those two might have a little head start on the rest of them, but. Uh, that w that's what great. What's going to be great about September in training camp? We have all kinds of uh, very good uh, veteran players around, our younger people, and then maybe we'll get a surprise or two. Maybe it'll be somebody that we don't even mention today that comes into camp and, and wins a job. But it's really up to them. Sir, you're up next. You know, the most important question that I have is for Coach. Um, all of last season, we as fans saw that not only you, but the whole coaching staff lost all morale for what happened. Can you explain to me how your morale is going to be escalated by what's happened so far and 
will there be enough to really get this team moving? Well, last year's morale, I can just sum it up in one or a couple words, losing sucks. That's right? absolutely right. And I agree. You think you had it tough, you should have saw my wife. Oh, that was, that was trouble. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy I wasn't that living was, that was with trouble. you. Uh, no, it was a tough year for all our staff. It really was. And it, uh, you know, we, every year you go into the season, you have high hopes and, uh, to, you know, it doesn't matter who you have on your team. You always think you can put together something or find a way to win games. And we just didn't win enough games last year. And there was a whole host of uh, uh, reasons why, as it came down the end of the season, um, as Don mentioned, we, we realized we weren't going to, be a playoff team and it was time to and it's no different than Chicago or Tampa or wherever they've been you've got to trade some assets to try to improve in the future uh, and that's an organizational decision that's hard on coaches though hard on coaches and hard on coaches morale but I can just tell you from being on the ice today and usually NHL coaches aren't on the ice with the in the development camp so our whole staff is here today uh, being a part of the development camp, not in the stands, but on the ice. And if you see the skill level out there today, it gives all of us hope that we're going to go, we're going the right direction. You see Max Domi and how much he's matured from three years ago. Uh, even a Perlini from one year to see him out there is, uh, there's certainly hope for the future. And it's funny, all our coaches came off the ice today and said that is so different than last year. And two reasons. One, we had less players, so we had more individual attention to them. But the skill level and speed in which uh, just a first day of development camp was more to an NHL pace than we finished last year. So the morale of our coaches has already started to improve just by one practice with a bunch of young, energetic kids with a high grade of skill. So you couple that with, we talked about, if we're going to bring kids in our lineup, which it's a hard game, and it's... It's, you know, this, this is the men's league now. It's not the kids' league anymore. I agree with that. And it's a hard league. But you have to make sure you have good veteran players around them. They're going to support them. And we have, like, Vermette, Mikhaila, Gordon, Doan. These guys are top, top people and good players. So if you supplement good veteran players and now you bring some good kids in, your organization is going the right way. And this is the first time in my six or seven years that I've been here. We've been patchwork for a long time. And there's the odd rookie that, you know, looks like he can make a splash. Uh, Ryder did it last year, jumped in and played well. But this year, I think we've got two or three kids that are going to jump in and do the same thing Ryder did last year, which in turn makes the coaches feel better, which in turn makes the veterans feel better, and which in turn, hopefully, we win more. <laughs> and make fans feel better. And maybe most importantly, it makes your wife feel better, right? One, one more question. One more question. Sure. This one for Don. Don, throughout the media, they're saying we're so far under the minimum. How much room do we really have left? And is there a group of people that will get us over that minimum? No, that's absolutely not true. We're, we're well beyond the minimum. Uh, I don't much? know where we are, but that was never even this whole pronger thing pick up. That all that was was an accounting issue. They had they I'm had talking a, to an accountant. I can make things happen. <laughs> okay, <Yeah>. right. <laughs> you know, uh, you know. Basically, in a nutshell, they were willing to eat to half a million dollars of grossman salary if I took them on. I said, okay, we'll take them on because it, it meant nothing to us. So really, that that whole th idea that we were acquiring pronger so that we could spend below the cap, absolutely not. I've said it before. Our budget has improved, uh, is increased from last season. Uh, we're going to, you know, we're like a lot of teams. You look at uh, Ottawa and you look at what Calgary did last year and and uh, we know we have to do a lot of things well and right, but uh, we're, we're certainly in a much, much better place than maybe, I, I'm not even sure where people, because I get this asked a lot, are you worried about getting to the floor? And I say, I, I don't know what they're reading or what they're looking at, but just look at our roster and add up the numbers and you can see we're going to be well above the floor. Okay. Thank Sir. You. Hi, my name is Kyle. Um, I drive from Tucson, Arizona for all the games. I became a season ticket holder when the Coyotes ownership trouble happened, and it was due to the leadership of Don Maloney and Dave Tippett. Uh, the team we had during those rough times was worth support and worth showing, in my opinion, to the outside markets that 
people are dedicated and hockey fans. I grew up in Tucson before the Coyotes moved here playing hockey. And I just wanted to say I will continue to drive for Arizona Coyote games anywhere. It doesn't have to be Glendale, but just to support hockey in Arizona. And because we have an NHL team in Arizona, I am an eternal optimist. So I want to say I was really happy with all the moves we made. It feels like we're building a team that isn't about one player, but is not only about the group, but the community. I love picking up draft picks like Fisher and Dvorak, who have ties to the community. I hope we can not be so bad to get Austin Matthews through the draft, but uh, maybe hopefully draft him or bring in a guy like Sean Couturier through the draft. So I wanted to encourage that. Because of the question marks with Glendale, I, I can't ask about development of hockey in the state of Arizona, because that really probably puts a hold but I wanted to say thanks to Matt Schott for doing all the work he does around the state, traveling around. I'd like to encourage the Arizona Coyotes to help uh, Pine Top this year to get their outdoor rink built during the winter so they can have skating up in the mountains here in Arizona. Um, they only need like ten dollars or $15,000 to make it happen. So I think between everybody here. Um, but I just also wanted to ask um, Don, do you think we need to make any more moves or is it too early to tell based on just judging talent and what slots we might still need? I wanted to ask Anthony about the Arizona license plate for the Coyotes, if that's still a possibility. And Dave Tippett, I wanted to ask you, how do you stay calm when everything's going crazy? Because I enjoy listening to your post-game comments driving home to Tucson. It always makes me feel less depressed when we lose and I'm halfway to you know Casa Grande and I still have an hour to go. Um, but I also wanted to say how concerned are we for um, new jock straps now that Lucic and Brown are both on the Kings. Um, I'm concerned for their propensity to jab in the nether regions. But thank you guys. Um, thanks Kyle. Um, so I guess you, you uh, gave each of us a question. I'll go first on the easy one. Uh, license plates, yes, they're happening. Um, they're, um, it's all, hey, it's all about the license plates. They always say leave when you're ahead. Good night. Um, th we, we know they're going to happen this calendar year. Um, I don't know if Liz from our foundation is here, but I believe I heard they could be coming as soon as September. So, uh, we'll, don't, don't, don't quote me, you know, it, it is government, so. Um, but we are hopeful that it'll come then. But I do want to make, before I turn, uh, turn the, the questions over to Don and Dave, you made a comment about, you know, uh, youth hockey here in Arizona, and you rightfully pointed out, Matt, uh, we have, you know, our friends from the Desert, Desert Hockey Development Group are here as well. Um, there is no question, regardless of any, you know, so-called clouds, um, we're in Arizona. We're not going anywhere. We're not leaving the state. So there has been absolutely no change in our mandate. You know, we're working very closely with the league on, on what's called the growth plan, on, on how we can drive, you know, additional. Look, at the end of the day, how you become a truly successful market in a non-traditional uh, market like ours is you look at what they've done in San Jose. You look at what the, they've done in Dallas uh, that, that Dave knows well. Um, you, you get more kids playing the game. That is, and, and look, where we're sitting here today, and you mentioned Austin Matthews and no, we will not be going for a for you know lottery next year. God help us all. But I mean, all you have to do is look at you know Austin Matthews playing you know his his youth hockey growing up here in Arizona is such a testament to the sports growth here. And you know, humbly, I I'd say the Coyotes deserve taking a big amount of credit for that. So, um, but but thank you for the comment. Uh, we might be dialing back on a few investments in the arena, but. Um, we're, we're definitely continuing to support youth hockey. Um, I can't even remember what your questions now were for, for Don and Dave. <laughs> um, the, the answer is we're always looking to improve. Um, we just, right now, we're looking at our, our defense and we could probably use a little more puck movement ability. As we have a small little thing we're looking at right now, but uh, the good thing is we still have some, some uh, some uh, resources in reserve that uh, we can be patient now. We have a good enough core, and one thing's we're adamant, uh, Tip and I, we're not going to fill up our roster with, uh, with the, the veteran, the older veteran players. We have to leave room for the, some of these young players. And uh, so really, we're in a fairly good position right now to sit back and let people come to us, and, and uh, maybe there's a, a bargain out there that makes sense to us. 
the press conferences aren't for about 20 minutes after the game, so I, <laughs> I go back in my office, I sit there, I bang a few walls, kick a few chairs, and I walk out and everything's fine from there. So. <laughs> I'm a very big analytics person. I love the moves you guys made between bringing in the new assistant manager. But I also kind of, and I also applaud a lot of the moves you guys made bringing in a lot of possession players and the players that so show grit and heart like Gordon, like the two block shots on that penalty kill. But my question becomes as much as I love Vermette and Mahalik and please don't kill me for this. This roster besides the youth looks like a lot like the one from last year and like you're going to be putting a lot on Mike Smith's shoulders again. What do you have any more ideas as far as who to play or how you might overcome those with these rookies coming in for both General Manager Don Maloney and Coach Tip? Uh, I'll start. I think we've filled a lot more holes than we had at the start of last year. A couple of key key uh, people that we brought in: uh, Nicholas Grossman, that will play behind Ekman Larson on the left side, is a big defending, good penalty kill guy who uh, plays against other teams' top players. We didn't have that last year, so he's a big addition for us. You couple that on our defense with Dahlbeck coming in, who's a good defender, still young and, and will grow. Uh, we're a better defending team. Uh, young Murphy is going to take a step forward this year. And, and both, both Vermette and McCarlick, like you, you can't just, okay, we're plopping them back in. Last year, we struggled at center ice, so Vermette was our number one center just out of, by default. And that's not the case this year. We have some young players that could go in there. And not to say Burmette's not going to, he's going to play. He's going to play important minutes. But we have other people that can come in and take some of those minutes. The guy that's going to be interesting to watch is Richardson, who uh, we've got slotted kind of in a third line center. And he's kind of a checker, but his speed and tenacity, like right now I'm thinking about a line of him and Doan and Ryder for our third line. And if we can get them to the third line with Hansel, Domi, maybe another young guy, Vermette, Bodker, and now we're, I'm not sure which is our number one line, but we have way more balance than last year. So I, I really believe we've moved to the right direction. The one thing that was key to us is to bring veteran players in that can help our young players, and both Bermet, Mikhailik, and, and Gordon, or, or those three, are all huge in that, in that vein for us. Sir, continue on. John Lopat, I'm the season ticket holder. A hockey question. I understand we're going to three on three overtime this year. Are there any other rule changes? And why did we only get one preseason game at home? Uh, well, uh, Dave? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Matt, would you like to handle that? Um, this year, from a preseason perspective, let's not mince words, uh, our preseason games aren't attended all that great, uh, and, and unfortunately, um, it's something that we've had season ticket holders complain about the fact that they have to pay, you know, regular season game prices for for preseason games. So we were approached last year by our friend Luke Robitaille in Los Angeles, saying that Bakersfield wanted to host one of our preseason games. And would we be interested? Our view was: look, if we can remove one of the preseason games, uh, avoid you know uh, our season ticket holders having to pay uh, that that rate for a preseason game. It was, a, it was a good thing to do. That was the reason, and, and you know, I didn't understand or appreciate what, before I got involved in the business. These are decisions that are made pretty much when it comes to preseason. I mean, you guys line up next year's preseason like a year in advance. Yeah, we do, and it really was really became, a, it seemed to us that not, nobody really likes preseason, coming and paying for preseason games, and that's why we said, okay, let's, you know, let's lessen the financial burden on our, on our fans, and we play a couple more on the road, and we'll get, uh, get some revenue that way, and... Uh, so if, uh, but we'd love to play another another game there if people would uh, be happy and support it, I guess. Yeah, so that's the reason, but I think you had a question about the three-on-three three, uh, oh, yeah. and any other rule changes. Uh, the three-on-three, three, I think, is going to be very exciting. They had it in the American League last year. They were four-on-four four and then three-on-three, three, and there was a huge percentage uh, of the games were finished in overtime rather than going to the shootout. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm going to try to talk to three or four coaches from the American League that uh, see what their experience was with it. But it's going to be you put three top players on the ice and lots of turnovers and tired players are going to have a hard time changing. It's going to make for some very entertaining hockey. The other uh, real change of the coaches' challenge is being introduced this year, which it's sort of in a very narrow scope uh, 
ultimately tip and uh, and our video people are going to uh, going to have to decide you, you have to have your timeout available um, it's for uh, goaltender and if you probably read all about it but it is it is something when you see those egregious interference on your goaltender that they either get called one way and they should have been the other or vice versa uh, offsides or another area if those those offsides that everybody in the building can see and the, for some reason the referees uh, missed it uh, tip will have the opportunity to challenge it and uh, if he's successful one time he's successful he retains his challenge it's it's a very narrow scope but it should make it's really you know it's it, i think gary bettman described it best you're not going to get the calls always correct it's 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 to get it more correct than it is right now and uh, it's really for those really egregious uh, errors that people uh, you know stay up at night saying how could the referees ever miss that by the way, thank you. You are the best fans in hockey. Thank you for coming tonight. It's 100 degrees out, and we're talking hockey. We'll see you in the fall.